Transition states and intermediates are both molecules that are formed or substances that are formed as a reactant is being converted to a product. To help explain transition states and intermediates, I'm gonna draw an energy diagram. This would be a diagram for a chemical reaction where we are plotting the energy of the reactants and products versus time. So uh, you've probably seen quite a bit of single step energy diagrams. This would be an exothermic energy diagram where we have reactant A being converted to product B in a single step. And you've probably also seen endothermic energy diagrams, again, where we have some reactant that's being converted to some product in a single step. In organic chemistry, most of the reactions that we work with, that we actually work with in the lab, are not single step reactions where we immediately convert reactants to products. Rather, they are reactions that proceed over a series of steps. So our reactant, let's say this is our reactant right here, it undergoes a step where it produces something that is not a product. We'll give a name to it in a minute. But the reaction is not done, so it has to continue and maybe it makes something else. And the number of steps here depends on the reaction. So we'll make this one have one more step and then it ends. Each one of these bumps in the diagram represents a step, a single step in the reaction. So this particular diagram that I've drawn has three steps. This is step number one of the reaction. This is step number two of the reaction and this is the last step three of the reaction now our reactant is still our starting point over here on the very left hand side that hasn't changed and our product is still out here at the end that has not changed as well we have names for these uh, molecules that are formed on the way from reactant to product, those substances are called intermediates, which I'm gonna give an I in the diagram. So those are our intermediates. The intermediates exist at every single downward point in the energy diagram in between the reactant and the product. Intermediates are usually pretty stable, so we're going to say that they are sort, sorta, sorta stable. Uh, I kind of hesitate to call them molecules. Let's call them compounds because sometimes they're charged. So they are sorta stable compounds. Sometimes they can be isolated. Sometimes isolatable. So what does that mean? Well, that means if you're actually doing this in the lab, sometimes, depending on time, you could do step one in a day and you could take this intermediate and put it in a container and bottle it up and save it for the next day. And then you could do step two and put this into a container, bottle it up and save it for another day. So sometimes, not always, sometimes the, these intermediates are isolatable. Sort of stable compounds, sometimes isolatable, and they are formed in multi-step reactions. Each one of these steps, we can, we can really think of them as sort of individual reactions. Like step one, it has its own activation energy. It's an endothermic step. So we can describe these individual steps in the same way that we would describe a single step reaction. Step two has its own activation energy and step two is exothermic. And step three has another activation energy and it is exothermic as well. So let's talk about the other thing um, we need to discuss, and that is transition states. 
Transition states are kind of like the opposites of the intermediates. The transition states exist at the high points of each one of the steps in a multi-step reaction. And transition states actually have their own symbol. So I'm not going to use the letter T. The symbol for a transition state kind of looks like an equal sign with a straight line drawn through it, but it's not really an equal sign because it's shorter than that. Like this is how I would draw an equal sign with a line. That's not what I'm trying to draw. Uh, it almost looks like a lowercase t with an extra line. So this particular reaction has three transition states. And transition states also exist in single step reactions. So you might have learned about transition states in general chemistry as well. They do, even though a single step reaction doesn't have an intermediate, it still has a transition state. The transition state is the high point in a step or the high point in a, in a single reaction where the reactant has finally achieved or absorbed enough activation energy that is able to continue on to the next step in the reaction. Transition states are unstable. There is no question about their stability. They are definitely unstable. You cannot stop a reaction at the transition state. So you could not get the reaction to here, stop it, put it in a container, and save it for another day. Once you get to this part, it will instantly and automatically downhill itself to the intermediate or to the product, depending on where it is in the reaction. So transition states are unstable. They are not isolatable. Uh, and they are, we're going to call them compounds as well, although that's not the best word to use to describe them. The best word to use to describe them is transition state, but I don't want this to be cyclic. So they are unstable, not isolatable compounds that are formed in the exact instant where we have bonds that are being changed. So sometimes for some reactions, this means that bonds are breaking. Sometimes it means bonds are forming. Sometimes bonds are breaking and forming at the same time. So the transition state is this, is this thing that is created in the exact instant that a bond is being made or a bond is being broken. They're very mysterious because we can't isolate them, which means we really can't see them. And so um, they're, what they look like is very theoretical, and that's what I'm going to talk about in the next video.